Hey guys, it's Phil with Gun Owners of America, and today we're going to talk about Joe Biden's State of the Union address, which was a total hot mess and predictably full of some anti-gun, gun control nonsense. We knew this was coming, and you can actually check out a bunch of these clips on our Twitter page, at Gun Owners, but I wanted to point out a few things that I noticed in the video that I think are pretty ridiculous. So let's go ahead and check it out. And we'll do everything in my power to crack down on gun trafficking of ghost guns that you can buy online, assemble at home, no serial numbers, can't be traced. All right, we have talked about this so many times, this whole fake ghost gun problem. He knows, number one, he can't really pass anything on ghost guns, also known as guns you can make at home, which you've been able to do since before the country was founded. He knows he can't get anything passed through Congress because members of Congress know this issue doesn't help them. And they're thinking about getting reelected. And they know that the American people don't want anything to happen to their ability to make handguns at home or rifles at home. And they know that the American people don't want Congress to touch homemade firearms. This is purely a political game for him and he thinks he's gonna fire up his base on it because he's really only speaking to a small constituency here and that's the anti-gun lobby. The ATF is already tracking nearly a billion firearms in this country. Why does he also need to dump in more? Like what's next? What's the purpose of this? As we've said before, and as the old saying goes, by the time you're tired of hearing something, it's probably getting through to other people. It's about gun confiscation. There is literally no other reason for him and the anti-gunners to want to put homemade firearms into a registry or to have them serialized. It's to one day push for gun confiscation. You think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests? <laughs> okay, this next one, it's... It's just an argument. It kind of makes us laugh a little bit. It's the whole deer wearing Kevlar thing. Because they're still trying to pretend like the Second Amendment is about hunting or even having protection for yourself in your home or on your person when you're walking about. Yeah, it is about being able to protect yourself against the criminal, but it's about so much more. I asked Congress to pass proven measures to reduce gun violence. Pass universal background checks. He's bringing out some of the hits and some of the classics on gun control but they're not even the good ones. This idea of proven measures to reduce gun violence with universal background checks, UBC fails to become law every time it comes up, okay? And at the state level, it either fails or it passes by super narrow margins because people just don't want it. This is nothing more than some scheme to register more firearm transactions in the ATF's registry, which, like I said before, is already close to a billion records. This is kind of getting boring, but every time he says this stuff, we have to get out there and say we disapprove of it, or else the conversation might tilt towards, well, is this really okay? Is this not okay? Where are the gun groups on this? Well, GOA is here to tell you we oppose and we hate it, and we're not okay with it. Make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, he met with a wall of strength he never anticipated or imagined. He uh -huh. met the Ukrainian people. Look at these clapping seals. And President Zelensky. How'd she get away from the fighting? Send her back. They need her. And their fearlessness, their courage, their determination literally inspires the world. Groups of citizens. It would be great if he said this stuff about us. Bodies. Everyone from students to retirees to teachers turned soldiers defending their homeland. It would be great if he said those nice things about us once in a while, wouldn't it? But the thing he's obviously forgetting is the massive amount of guns the Ukrainian government gave to Ukrainians to fight this. And in it would have been nice if these good people had the ability to practice, to use these guns like more than five minutes before the tanks came rolling down the street. But he can't mention that. What he did mention was people standing in front of tanks to block them with their bodies. Who the heck thinks that's a good idea? It's a better idea to recognize that people have the right to own these weapons and so much more in order to defend themselves from threats domestically and threats coming from abroad. That's what this should be about. It's almost like a well-regulated militia is necessary to the security of a free state. But he cannot bring himself to saying that. Putin wasn't just met with regular guys standing in front of tanks. He was met with people who 
just like five minutes ago got somewhat armed by the government. It shouldn't work that way. Also, why the heck was the government just hoarding all these guns? Like, obviously they have no problem with guns because they were keeping a bunch for themselves. They just didn't want the people of Ukraine to have them. This isn't a distinctly Ukrainian problem. This is a problem of governments in general. They don't like us being armed, which is why in this country, we fight so hard to maintain that freedom. So in a tweet that Biden and probably his people put out, I don't think he knows how to use social media, in a tweet that Biden put out uh, about the State of the Union and what he wants Congress to do regarding guns and gun control, he put out this message that he's calling on Congress to pass universal background checks, loser, ban assault weapons in high capacity magazines, loser, repeal the liability shield that makes gun manufacturers the only industry that can't be sued. Okay, we've just discussed universal background checks, how nobody wants them, and there's tons of literature out there about how they don't work. Banning assault weapons in high capacity magazines, high capacity is just a made up term, and we just talked about why that is a non-starter for a lot of people. And then here's the one we discussed in a video a couple weeks ago, repeal the liability shield that makes gun manufacturers the only industry that can't be sued. You guys should check out our Instagram page. We put up a quick video where I sort of briefly broke that down. This isn't a problem. Like I said last time, you can't sue a gun maker for a gun that isn't defective. You can sue a gun maker for a gun that is defective. There is no special protection. What Biden and the anti-gunners want is for either the law or some rogue judge to create a carve out where you can sue a gun manufacturer for anything and to basically bankrupt them. And all this law does is says you have to treat guns like you would any other product. You can't treat them differently. If a gun is functioning as it's supposed to, you can't sue the gun maker. But what they want is for you to be able to have let's say in the case of a judge, case law that sets a precedent where you can sue a gun maker for anything, or they want to be able to sue gun makers legally for anything. That's all this is. There's no special protection here. He's lying. You can sue a gun maker if the gun is malfunctioning. And that's all this is. So here's a couple things that GOA thinks should become law. What about passing concealed carry reciprocity or repealing the NFA? we should repeal the NFA. What about deleting, and here's some low hanging fruit, what about deleting the ATF's gun registry? These actions would restore the second amendment pretty close to what it should be. There's a lot of work to do, but these three simple things are a great start. All right guys, that's it for this week. You can count on us to bring you a lot more in the coming weeks, months, and years. We'll see you next time.